So you did mention physics as the the first starting point. So um, general relativity allows for wormholes. Uh, they technically can exist. Do you think um, those can ever be leveraged by humans to travel faster than the speed of light? Well, or are you saying the wormhole thing is, is debatable. Uh, the that we currently do not know of any means of going faster than the speed of light. Uh, there, there is like, like to, there, there are some ideas about having space. Like, so, so you're going to like move at the speed of light through, through space. But if you can make space itself move, that, that, that's like, that, that's warping mm -hmm. space. If, um, Space is, is capable of moving faster than the speed of light. <laughs> right. Uh, like the universe in the Big Bang, the universe, the universe expanded at much, much more than the speed of light by a lot. Yeah. Um, so, um, but the, if this is possible, the, the, the amount of energy required to warp space is so gigantic, it boggles the mind. So all the work you've done with propulsion, how much innovation is possible with rocket propulsion? Is this, um, I mean, you've seen it all and you're constantly innovating in every aspect. How much is possible? Like how much can you get 10 X somehow? Is there something in there in physics that you can get significant improvement in terms of efficiency of engines and all those kinds of things? Well, as I was saying, like the, the really the Holy Grail is a, a fully and rapidly reusable orbital system. Um, so uh right now uh the Falcon 9 is the only reusable rocket out there. Uh, but it, but the the booster comes back and lands and you've seen the videos uh and we get the nose coronal fairing back but we do not get the upper stage back. So uh that means that we have a minimum cost of of uh, building an upper stage. Um you can think of like a two stage rocket of, of sort of like two airplanes like a big airplane and a smaller airplane. Um, and we get the big airplane back, but not the small airplane. And so it still costs a lot, you know, so that upper stage is, you know, at least $10 million. Um, and then the degree of the, the booster is not as reuse, it's not as rapidly and completely reusable as we'd like in order the fairings. So, you know, our, our kind of minimum marginal cost, not counting overhead for per flight is on the order of 15 to $20 million maybe. Um, so, uh, that's, that's extremely good for, it's by far better than any rocket ever in history. Um, but, uh, with full and rapid reusability, we can reduce the cost per ton to orbit by, uh, a factor of a hundred. Just think of it like, um, like imagine if you had an aircraft or something or a, a car, oh, yeah, um, and if you had to buy a new car every time you went for a drive, it would be very expensive. It would be silly, frankly. Mm -hmm. But um, but you, in fact, you just refuel the car or recharge the car, and that uh, makes your trip uh, like, <laughs> I don't know, a thousand times cheaper. <laughs> so it's the same for rockets. Uh, if you, it's, it's uh, very difficult to make this complex machine that can go to orbit. And so if you cannot reuse it and have to, have to throw even any part of, any significant part of it away, that massively increases the cost. So, you know, Starship in theory could do a cost per launch of like a million, maybe $2 million or something like that. Um, and uh, and put over a hundred tons in orbit, which is crazy. Yeah. So that's incredible. So you're saying like it's uh, by far the biggest bang for the buck is to make it fully reusable versus like some kind of brilliant breakthrough in theoretical physics. No, no, there's no, there's no brilliant break. No, there's no, it just make, you're going to make the rocket reusable. Yeah. This is an extremely difficult engineering problem. Got it. Uh, but no, no new physics is required. 